All right, so. Paul and Morgan, Christian couple influencer, YouTubers, have been doing something a little new with their content um, called 24 Hours with Paul and Morgan, which sounds like my personal nightmare. But so far, it has been interesting. I think it's a an interesting idea for content. I recently did one with uh, Dave and Bethany from Girl to Find, and there was some interesting content that came out of that, some um, drama, deconstruction going on with Dave, apparently. But they uh, recently did one with Josh Benson. And if you don't know who he is, he is a <clears throat> comedian, I would say, on TikTok. He does sketches and uh, lately has done kind of some more serious content as well. And Josh is one of those Christians that I uh, appreciate as a person. Um, he doesn't seem to be hold too many harmful beliefs. Or if he does, he is not like pushing those on other people. He is a genuinely funny person. His skits are funny. His sketches are funny. Uh, his comedy is funny. He has had a few takes here and there that have been like uh, kind of cringy to me as a secular person who's not going to agree with all of his beliefs. Um, so like I can't I can't vouch for him in every way possible, but he does seem like a very genuine, uh, kind, loving and uh, honest person. Lately, he has also been making content um, exposing corruption within the church, as well as uh, he seems to be really interested in calling out like legalism or misogyny, stuff like that. So he actually has had some beef with Paul and Morgan in the past that I'm not really aware of. I'm sure they'll go over in this video. If you want more of a full rundown about Paul and Morgan... A great channel for that, let's see, is Fundy Fridays. And uh, she has a video from about a year ago with a full rundown on Paul and Morgan. Very interesting video. All her videos are very well done, very well researched, and very well presented. Um, from a very also kind of kind and... and um, gracious point of view i would say as well so definitely uh check out their channel fundy fridays if you enjoy um christian drama religious drama um all sorts of things around that um she covers a lot of that and it's it's really good but yeah so let's get into this video here um not entirely what sure not entirely sure what to expect but I think that it will be interesting nonetheless. Down to film episode three. Wow. I think Trump panders to us, tries to pander to Christians. You think Trump is a fraud, but Biden saying he's a, a Catholic? Well, I, I might not. have in that video said that I wanted to punch you <laughs> in the face. I think that Paul and Morgan are kind of being legalistic here, even if they don't realize it. I'm like a public school Christian. The people <laughs> that come for me are like the homeschool Christians. <laughs> Were you homeschooled? <laughs> After voting for Biden, it's been four years almost. Do you feel like good about your vote? I'm older and I think the earth is. I find it interesting that he voted for Biden. That's interesting to me. I feel like. I, I don't know. I feel like. Um, I feel like there's plenty of Christians who are not, not on board with Trump. And there's plenty of Christians who weren't on board with him from the beginning, to be fair. Um, billions and billions of years old and what i am a worship leader i have very high standards when it comes to who's leading worship up on the stage with you how they live their lives off the stage I mean, economy wise the border you live in texas bro you live in texas uh, don't, get, don't get me started on the border man it's a very powerful thing to believe that you're the one that has the exact line bro why are we <laughs> why are all the podcasts these days this is like the new meta. Having this like low angle with super short shorts to show off the legs, like. <laughs> 
line of convictions and things figured you're out. You're 100% correct. You're so correct. Of like, this is where the line is drawn. It's very powerful to believe that. It doesn't always make it true. True. The division Facts. between Christians online is immense. In this series, we will press into tough conversations, disagree with love, and humanize the person behind the screen. Join us as we discover the real lives of some of the most influential Christian figures. And talk shit about them afterwards, which is what they did with Dave after they did their episode with him. Hey, we're Paula Morgan, and we can't wait for you to watch this episode of 24 Hours With. We had the opportunity to spend the day with Josh Benson from Church Chad. Huge shout out to Josh and Sydney for being down to film episode three while being one month into living with their new baby girl, sleep deprived in the trenches of new parenthood. Keeping it real. We Honestly, though, I feel like that would be a good time to like have somebody over and film some content with them. After like four weeks of being off from work, being a parent, it'd be nice to like, I don't know, me personally, it'd be nice to have somebody... Something to do, I guess. We've Shake had online disagreements bit. in the past. I may or may not have wanted to punch Josh in the face. So the question now is, can we squash our beef face to face? We talked through hot topics like Trump versus Biden, pro-life versus pro-choice, modesty, edgy Christian memes, and much more. Grab the fire extinguisher because this beef is sizzling. Cringe. The videography here is neat if they, if this isn't like stock footage, if they did it themselves, it's pretty, it's nice. Yes, do you want a soda water? Yeah, I'd love like that. We got you. We're soda water fiends here. Same. We are Oh my goodness, dude. Would you like ice in a cup? This is great. Pure. I've never had. Oh no. Well, I want to know. This is like totally unrelated to content. Just like, what has been the most surprising thing to become a dad for you? <laughs> two, you just two dads kept kicking just out. out, man. I knew I would. Okay, but like, I'll experience the the full range of the human emotion by like four a.m. Like, yeah. I wake up, I'm tired, and I'm grumpy, and she's crying, and then I'm like holding my daughter, and she's like cooing because I'm feeding her. I'm like, oh, you're so precious, I love you. I'm like crying, and then she just, you know, poops her diaper, and I'm like, oh, but you're still so beautiful. Hey, we've only been here less than an hour, and I can tell this man is a good dad. Yeah. So if we yeah. disagree on yeah. everything else under the sun, I will still- He's a good dad. I, will... I would feel so uncomfortable being around this dude. I can't, I can't really verbalize why yet. Put that on my- <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it's awesome. Look here, Morgan, you just got, you got me and Josh cutting the breeze about fatherhood. <laughs> Two moms. Get over there. Two moms. Next moms. To <laughs> so tiny. Luca so was 9.3 pounds, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> You're child. like, I don't know what an 8 pound baby looks like. My sister just said the same thing. Uh, oh, that's her food. Here, you can eat first. Because you have to do that. Okay. No. I won't say no to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've had to kind of adjust morning routine film because, uh, well, Josh over here gets up at 3 a.m. and we were not going to show up at his house at 3 in the morning, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I've noticed is we were in San Antonio last episode and they were like, we got to get tacos like for breakfast really like that is not a common thing in kentucky and really like, here, and you guys breakfast are like, tacos, tacos are tacos. like number one it's <laughs> that and oh, donuts nice. like we had in our little hometown i've recently started uh my work caters breakfast every other week and they started doing breakfast tacos from cracker barrel and they're they're great I've never had this before. I grew up in a town of like 5,000 people. East Texas, very not diverse city, and we can talk about that later. But there was one like Vietnamese family. They ran the donut shop and they were the nicest people ever and they are so good. You said that uh, the town you grew up in was not very diverse. Would you consider it one of the racist towns of America? <laughs> Would I consider it like most racist? No, but that's like part of my upbringing is like there's so many white people. Uh, and it, talking about like Christianity, the line between being a Republican and being Christian was super blurred. It's like, you yeah. can't be a Christian if you're not Republican, you know? That's the way it was for me growing up too. <clears throat> like it wasn't like explicitly said most of the time, but like 
It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess you could be a Democrat and be a Christian, but you probably you're probably not a Christian if you're a Democrat. And I grew up until I graduated, like believing that. It's like, yeah, like we're all white folks. This is how things go. We, I think I graduated with two black kids. Going to college, like from that, was when kind of around the time when Trump ran. And so I see all these people who, again, we're living in, in white person heaven, I guess. They're like our, our church's <laughs> leaders or whatever. And that they're super nice or whatever. They, ne they never said anything, whatever. But to your point, Paul, it was like, sometimes they would kind of say something under the radar and you're like, oh, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Then Trump runs and like all these guys, men and women that I looked up to in our church, all of a sudden just kind of start saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah, that's uh, so many people just went mask off at that point or at some point after they just like all pretext just dropped and they were just like yeah we can be racist now and i'm like oh like y'all are kind of racist um and i don't really want to be a part of this you know what i'm saying we had a guy in our town who black guy um he's like a youth pastor in san antonio now best dude ever and Trump starts running and he kind of voices concern about that. And then the town that like cherished him so much, like, you know, this is like, we love this guy. All of a sudden they're like, you know, you're not welcome at my house anymore. I don't know if you would call it like reformation or like deconstruction or whatever. But around that time, I really kind of looked in the mirror and, been, and was like, what have I been taught growing up like church wise that was just like veiled Republicanism? church chat got started so i'm just doing the financial advice thing going to church like i love jesus and then COVID hits and we're all bored out of our minds i'm still in east texas at the time and i just start making tiktoks nothing really takes off and then i start doing like the chad persona which is just like making fun of stuff that i would say in like my early christian days or like guys in college like god told me you're my wife babe. so true i remember i remember saying the cringiest shit when i was like a teenager you know it is so hard to find it is good guys so hard finding good kinds i know right we don't want much like i just want a pastor we're not asking for much a pastor uh buff huge 30 inch biceps yeah washboard abs obviously uh, um has to be making six figures a year yes i least. mean a million be preferable but i don't want to work <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> can't ever uh talk to a girl before me no if he has held sure. another girl's hand that is not okay. It. Oh, Jay, good to see you this Sunday morning, buddy. Oh, you like the fit? Yeah, man, I just got added to the worship team. So I'm the backup, backup bass player. And I had to look the part. So I went and got a jean jacket with skinny jeans and suede boots. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal now, but it's not about me. It's not about me. It's all about him, man. Speaking of worship music, did I see correctly that this- He just like, he, he highlighted so many, like just true things from like, many different aspects of christianity this weekend you were listening to that new drake 21 savage rap album buddy no you can't call yourself a christian if you're listening to that kind of demonic music man you must be in a dark dark place hey i'm gonna be praying for you diligently all right all right slugger get out of here and go repent next day i wake up it had like 300,000 views uh -huh. and now we make stupid little uh cringe videos you know making fun of the cringy christians i'm guessing you've seen a little bit of this series yeah, yeah. you know that we don't shy away from the, uh, we don't shy away from the challenging conversation. Right. How are you, just be totally on it. Are you nervous that we're gonna like come after you? I, I wouldn't say nervous, uh, cause I think you guys, you know, you know, your, your goal here is to have tough conversations that I don't think you would have flown out here if you thought that I was gonna like, just kind of stroke your ego and be like, I was just kidding the whole time. We're at, <laughs> no, you know? we're not having that. So it, exactly. So deep. What I was gonna ask. Yeah. Be completely honest, first impressions of Paul and Morgan. You've made a few reactions, of uh, course. pushing back on us at times. What, what was your first reaction when you saw our content? Um, I think first video was, it was a video that I never even posted. Uh, Cause I think you guys were talking about sex. Okay. Uh, I, I really, if I'm being completely Just honest, be totally I thought it honest. was like, I thought you guys were being super legalistic. Okay. And I feel like some of the, the videos that I have posted, it, they're still kind of like that legalism aspects where i'm like 
like I don't agree with much of this at all. Yeah. Well, I am excited to dive into those uh, those areas. Let's give our first impressions here. Let me. You can say douche, by the way. <laughs> Did you watch our response video talking about like cussing and music? And we, you responded to us, and then we responded to you again. I don't think I knew you guys responded. <laughs> well, I, I might not. have in that video said that I wanted to punch <laughs> you in the face. Oh, that's okay. You got the first. I feel like it would be weird, uh, like having like beef with somebody online and then like hanging out with them for a day. First, when you do get like people upset at your content, yeah. what is kind of the general things that they're upset about? Probably just that. So I think the the thing that Christians love to throw around is like you just want to be a part of the world so badly. You know, you want to. <laughs> You know, just toe the line with sin so badly. The best thing about being married is my wife is like my accountability kind of with, I'll show her like, you know, babe, what do you think about this? And there's been times uh, when she's like, you can't post that, you know? And I'm like, oh, it's so funny though. <laughs> like when I'm making fun of like a, a super Republican and they think like the clitoris is a, a liberal lie or whatever. She said, I can't post that. I thought it was funny, you know? And so, she, I've got that accountability and my wife is like super strong spiritual Christian and so already knowing like if she gives me the green light I know that we're probably in a good spot so when I see comments like that it's just kind of like I, I, again I kind of take it back to like I feel like you're just being a bit legalistic and I think that that's the hot button like you're just trying to be like the world you know are you really saved Josh if you're posting this and it's like you know it's really just it's really just an attempt to shut down any sort of um critique or uh pushback anything like that there, there's no like substance to it. it it's just like a knee jerk reaction to like feeling uncomfortable or being called out we're talking about again like can women wear bikinis at the beach or can someone right. say a cuss word in, in a certain context or it's like not I think you're taking it a bit far. Issue necessarily. Right. <laughs> I'm excited to get into yeah discussing more of those specific topics. <laughs> friends, Josh has friends on Fundy Snark, no. the Reddit hate group. Yeah. So literally, it, I, I knew about it, and they like posted a couple of my videos, I think, and then I saw that they're not huge fans of you guys at all. Oh no. Uh, that's, so <laughs> that's to put it in a nice way. <laughs> Do you have a group of people that comes after you? Uh oh, oh, we'll call it like this. I'm like a public. I yeah the I don't know the uh, snark reddits. I don't I don't vibe with those. I, they can be like fun to like dip your toes in. They get a little drama every now and then, but they are such toxic places. School Christian, the people that come for me are like the homeschool Christians. <laughs> Were you homeschool? <laughs> 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 like if you went to school and your your high school taught about evolution, then you might like my stuff. Wait, so are, are you are you telling me you believe in evolution? To an extent, like the development of like species like you can evolve like what's the the, the darwin's uh theory you know, beak of... whatever like the beak develops because the finches or whatever okay so you're, you're ultimately food. telling me my micro evolution Wait, i don't i don't think we i don't know what the uh liv says wait so do they both not like each other still or not i'm not sure i don't know what the fallout of this has been uh, 
this was released last week. I haven't seen anything like updates from it. I guess we'll see by the end. I'm sure that they still have a lot of disagreements, but like true, true like, from they come from de very different points of views. Monkeys, I do believe that okay. God created, you know, Adam and Eve. Good, good. You know, in the garden. So you're saying the adaptive, the, the uh, yeah, like adaptive, adaptive evolution. evolution. Wait, do you but believe within sp within species though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within, within species. species. Do you believe that? Um, are you old Earth or new Earth? New Earth, baby. No way. I so new I did Earth, not baby. know that was even a thing. Really? That's crazy. Yeah, I grew up uh, young Earth creationist all the way, and like if you, and taught that if you believed, or, or pretty much that like believing in evolution or believing in, basically believing that the creation story was not one hundred percent literal, was a slippery slope to just like denying the faith, in total. So, that just was not an option until. After college, I guess that's what public school will do to you. Public school. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, we were we were always taught, and I I still. I'm... Which yeah, that's that's why a lot of Christians don't want to send their kids to public school because uh, they don't want them learning that stuff. But they're going to learn it eventually. And uh... old Earth, I think the Earth is billions and billions of years old, and what God manufactured, you know, this beautiful creation story, and so you I've, know, I've had these. And to be fair, like there are plenty of like really high level theologians, like uh, pastors within Orthodox Protestant Christianity who believe in old earth creationism, who believe in evolution, and, and they don't see a problem with it when it comes to uh, being a Christian or, or conflicting with the Bible. But there are a large contingent of Christians who believe that Young Earth creationism is like an essential belief. And it's not like, it's not like you can't be saved if you don't believe that, but like if you, they, they believe it's not true. And they believe that if you, if you compromise on that issue, then it's a slippery slope. You will compromise on other issues. That is Ken Ham's big thing from Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum. He's having conversations before. But what's your short answer to how you reconcile the Bible saying, you know, seven days? What's a what is a literal day for God? Is it twenty four hours? I mean, throughout the rest of Scripture, though, it it seems like it's pointing to a a day like a we're, we're used to. Hour uh -huh. period. Also, like I, the 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 biggest thing here is to me the original the translation or like trying to figure that out doesn't matter because Genesis was written just like a few hundred years before Jesus based off of thousands of years of oral tradition of just stories being handed down generation to generation for thousands of years. And even if you have a true story to begin with, there's no way you end up with a true story at the end of that. It is thousands of years of the game of telephone. Um, so it's, it's, to me, like the, the whole like quibbling about whether, you know, the definition of a year for the Hebrew people at that time um, just doesn't matter to me because the whole thing is mythology pretty much. Yeah. I, I would disagree. But again, I don't think that I found in Scripture that it points to, yeah, God did this in 24 hours, and then he did that. I think it's kind of a beautiful story, if you will. Like, he, he's so intentional. Like, he doesn't just, you know, all right, there's water. It's like this beautiful creation of, like, watch how I can, like, make this happen, like, with my paintbrush. And it takes some time, but... But there is yeah. things in Scripture that he's done immediately. Yeah. Like, he's like creating Adam. Fingers. You're like, all right, Adam's here now. Boom. He's got Eve. Boom. I guess here's my biggest question. Why wouldn't your natural go-to be to just take the Bible at what it says, which is, you know, so you guys are seven days. Are you guys biblical, like, li literally? Like, do you take it literally and you say, this is literally what it says, and that's, like, what I will take it as? I will. T um, obviously, there are portions that are clearly poetic. There are mm -hmm. parables. Um, but I've heard people, like, really push back on, on people that are more on the literalist side. And I'm kind of like... 
If it appears that we should take it literally, I'm gonna take it literally. If it's pretty clear that it's not that, and it's more poetic, then I'm I'm fine with that. Where where do you then? Because I think that the Earth shows signs of like age, you know, and you bring into like dinosaur fossils. Mm -hmm. um, are you one of the Christians that believe? I yeah. So there's there's a lot that can go into explaining away the evidence of evolution. A lot of it is. So a lot of it is like, um, like just doesn't even take into account at all newer stuff. A lot of it like kind of bases off of older science and understanding and like seeks to debunk that or say like, oh, that's not really reliable. So we can't trust that. Um, when things have been updated a lot and we now know a lot more than we used to, or they will say that, um, certain things are like evidence of a rather than like something happened over a long period of time that it's evidence of something happening very quickly with a global flood which we don't really have evidence for so really at the end of the day um anything that you any doubts or disbeliefs or questions that you have can all be answered in one way or another by Christian apologists. They have thought about pretty much everything. So if you want to believe, you can choose to go and find someone who will explain things away for you. And that's what I did for a very, very long time. And eventually, those answers just did not hold water for me anymore. And instead, when I had doubts of continuing to go back and... and um seek answers from people who whose job it was to formulate answers and to to, to um, resolve these contradictions or or um, or doubts for people like that's their whole job Christian apologists that their that's their whole job is to think ways of explaining things away or um, making things make sense for you. And so um, whenever I had doubts, I would go to people like that, that I trusted to give me the right answer. Until eventually I decided I need to go and get my own answers. I need to figure this out for myself and figure out, is, is, is this really what I believe? Or do I, do I want to believe this and I am looking for excuses to explain away my doubts. And so I went and I looked for about a year, just looked at things from entirely different perspectives than I had before. Um, all the sources that I had been told to stay away from, unbiased academic sources, um, biased sources, all different kinds of areas. And at the end, I just couldn't believe anymore. It didn't make sense to me anymore. The narrative of the Bible or of any supernatural narrative about reality. I've heard this before, dude. I've heard that there are Christians that believe that Satan put dinosaur fossils into the ground to confuse us. What? Okay, I don't believe that. Okay, okay. So you guys weren't you weren't that homeschooled. I've never heard that. You've never heard that. I've, I've seen someone to confuse about that Satan. You die. Yeah, there's people who believe that dinosaurs are fake. Uh, Satan's like, this looks like a weird <laughs> So like just crazy stuff like that, but I believe that dinosaurs existed and I, you know, of course we learned about it in public school. It was a great time, man. Uh, you know, and, and this dinosaur is this old and you know, this this is this period, if you will. Okay. And the earth was, you know, in the ice age. Yeah, I'm no, you know, Skull, and, and neither am I. And you, I mean, I'm guessing you're probably not a big Ken Ham guy, the Creation Museum. I don't know who that is. Of course, no. he's a okay. He's, he started the Creation Museum. You guys come to Kentucky, and we'll take you to the Creation. He, the Ark Museum. Encounter in okay. Kentucky. Ken Ham is someone that really defends through like. I would be really interested to see Josh Benson do a video on Ken Ham and the Ark Encounter and the the Creation Museum. That would be interesting. You know, science and logic and scripture defends young Earth, and I tend to to fall into his camp. Fair enough. But I, I wasn't uh, public schooled, so. No, I just think it's, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was so crazy when I first heard it. But also, it's not like, uh, 
Oh, you're not a Christian if you're not old Earth newer. So it's kind of just right. something fun to throw around. <laughs> Love it, dude. Love wow. it. <laughs> Dude, this, our uh, trunk, it does this cool thing where it doesn't stay up, so you gotta like pop it up in your head. <laughs> Josh, start us off, my friend. We're gonna get into some deep conversation on the course, but let's let Josh focus in on hole number one. <laughs> <laughs> he said I'm a natural. So I thought it was interesting, Josh, you were talking about growing up and then you saw people within your church and your community, hardcore, like Christian, Trumper, kind of inseparable almost. And I, I do feel bad about the, uh, the black dude that you said started getting some real heat yep. for articulating differing views. I mean, that's a shame from like the church community. But I will say I posted a reel. I don't know if you remember this a while ago, back when I was posting more of these types of reels. And it said something to the, to the effect of, uh, I do not see how a Christian could vote Democrat mm. in today's political landscape. Hmm. Funny. Yes, but not funny. Ha ha. Funny weird. And you actually commented on it. And you, you push back on me fairly hard. Yeah. And in your pushback, I can read the pushback, but you actually said in 2020 that you voted for Joe Biden yeah. and that Biden, his morals lined up more closely with your morals or something to that effect. Sure. I'd, I'd love for you to, to expound. I mean, just off the bat, it's tough to vote for a guy that has trials already, if we're just calling a spade a spade, you know? Um, I think the big thing, and it's kind of a cop out that a lot of Christians lead on, is the uh, abortion take of like, oh well, you know, I, I'm I'm adamantly pro-life. I can't vote for, you know, a Democrat. And I think it's interesting. This was something that Andy Minio posted back okay. in 2016. So I don't know if it's still accurate, but it was like the previous 30 years of presidency, and basically the point was that regardless of whether we had a Republican or Democrat in office from like 1970 to 2016 the abortion rate went down. So, so yeah, ab abortion for a lot of Christians is their single issue. It is all they care about. I don't know how large of a contingent that is these days, but the people that I grew up around, that's all they cared about. And they just would not vote. If uh, whoever was running uh, was not tough on abortion, that did not believe that it was murder and that it should be totally banned. That was a hard line in the sand for them. And I think it's important to understand how important that issue has been for Christians over the last several decades and how they have made strategic plans to get to where we got in the overturning of Roe v. Wade. They understood what it would take to get there. They made plans for the long game to reach their goals, even though it was it's a massively unpopular policy or goal. Massively unpopular. But they did it because they had their goal, they buckled down, and they did what they had to do to get where they needed to get. And it caused them to support someone who otherwise they would not support because he made certain promises on this one issue. You look at something like that, it's difficult for me to then look at Trump and Biden and say, oh, well, me voting for Trump is really gonna push down, you know, again, playing kind of devil's advocate because I feel like the pro-life topic is what gets a lot of Christians. Absolutely. It's tough for me to sit here and see that and then be like, oh, well, I have to vote, my hands are tied, otherwise, you know, abortion rates are gonna jump through the roof. Our patron, Anthony, actually said, ask Josh, how can you vote for someone who openly calls for the free state-funded slaughter of unborn children? And your answer- Free state-funded. Free state-funded. I mean, Joe Biden- I mean- Is, is radically- 
He's he's pro choice. choice. Radically pro choice. So he's not pro abortion. He's pro choice in giving kind of that option. Now again, we we can get into kind of the personal view of things. I'm somewhat I would say a fan of the separation in church and state in the sense of of course I love voting for Christians. But you know, as a Christian representative, it's it's very interesting to sit here and say, okay, I elected a Christian individual. I now expect the United States of America as a whole, where we do have freedom of religion, to now adhere to a, a Christian principle. You hear what I'm saying? Do you feel so, like saving saving preborn babies is a, a Christian principle? I, it, it is, and I, I wish that Christians would at least acknowledge this and, and engage with our side of things. Like, of course, like we don't believe that fetuses are children. Right. And so when you kind of load all the conversation morally by saying you're slaughtering these preborn babies, that's not that's not how we view it. That's not how we view it. And so but of course, like we do value life. We value humans. And so the question there is when does a fetus have a is when is it having a conscious human experience that is uh deserving of protection as a human and for me that seems to be around 20 to 24 weeks when they start to uh, have all the parts necessary developed to start having a conscious experience um and so and before then, like, yes, it, it is a life. We're not arguing that. It is a life. <clears throat> but I don't believe that it is a person yet worthy of uh, the same kind of protections that we give any other person. And it's, in, it's important because you're, you're kind of weighing, valuing personhood in human life with the fetus, with a baby. And on the other hand, you have um, like forcing women to give birth pretty much no matter what the circumstances and not giving them a choice. And so that's, that's not great either. And so I, I think it uh, behooves us, it's important for us to find that balance between um, having a line and also protecting women's uh, autonomy, women's choice, etc. And so it is a specifically Christian or religious issue because it's it's the um really the christian kind of narrative about babies in the womb that causes them to believe that they are that they have personhood from conception from the time that they are like a one to two cell organism which is just just does not make any sense so Yeah, I think I think it's it's important for us to realize how serious they are in believing that fetuses are have personhood from conception. It's important for us as pro-choice people to understand that that that's really what they believe, and be able to have a discussion with them on that level. And it's important for them to understand how we feel about it. That that. They don't really have personhood. There's not really a person to speak of. There's not really a human experience to speak of until all the parts necessary to have that experience are developed. And that our, our desire is not to murder babies. Of course, that's not what we want. But we're also concerned about 
um, women's choice and their safety and their autonomy and, and kind of having a discussion balancing those things. And so I think it's important for both sides to understand where the other is coming from, at least when it comes to, to, to this conversation. I mean, Christians certainly seem to take that uh, kind of side more so than others. Uh, now, again. I am going to run to the restaurant. I'll be right back. All right. Back to Anthony's comment. Joe Biden pro-choice as opposed to calling for, you know, the slaughter of unborn babies. I, I don't feel as though that's what he stands for, if you will. I can certainly see how someone would say that, you know, the Democratic side is a bit more pro-choice. But again, you look at the facts. Bill Clinton had fewer abortions under his presidency than George uh, H.W. did. You know, Barack Obama had fewer abortion. So we see kind of this legislation, and certainly they can, you know, pander to their sides. I have to look back. I'd have to look back at that in statistics. I, I would say certainly now we're seeing less under Biden because of things that Trump helped put into place, including less the, that are documented, uh, including less the, that are, the uh, you know, pro life Supreme Court justices. And, and like, don't get me wrong. Like, personally, you know, I am pro life. Like, Cindy and I, we get pregnant at any point. We're, we're keeping the baby. Good, good, good. But uh, again, we're talking about now the safety of mothers. I appreciate Josh um, pushing back on this, and um, I, I can I can appreciate people being pro life and and believing that um, you know personally being pro life, but also uh, I think understanding the necessary uh, the necessity of choice, and like he's saying here, like. Um, Again, like the, these arguments here don't matter to people like Paul and Morgan because it's it's absolutely black and white in their mind. There is no gray area. There is no extenuating circumstances. It's black and white. And so why would they care about the safety of a mother when she is trying to unalive her baby, right? That's how they view it in their minds. If there's a point, and this, we're, we're diving down the rabbit hole now. I love it. You know, if, if the doctor comes to us however many weeks into the pregnancy, and he, he basically says, hey, Sydney and Josh, if you try to have this baby, your, your wife's going to die. I, I think there's some pro-lifers that would say it doesn't matter. Which, that's a very rare, rare yeah. case. Percentage of yeah. abortions happening because yeah, of that very, scenario very is tiny. This tiny. might be a hot take. In instances of when a woman is and she gets pregnant from that, I have a very difficult time, even as a Christian standing and saying yeah you have to keep that baby uh so yeah even if yeah i mean i really appreciate josh's takes here um but even if even if those instances are rare they still happen and that's a big reason why we have legislation is around um around extenuating circumstances to protect those issues so you you can't just hand wave it as if it doesn't matter Um, so the baby should be punished by the sin of someone else? That's a very nuanced issue. And I don't think that there's anything I could say to, like, give a solution for it. But I I see Christians you have, just you have empathy. This. You have empathy for the— I mean, dude— You have empathy for that situation. I have as, empathy. as do I. As, in, in that situation, I. I think that the mother who, who didn't even have a choice in, in having sex, she, sure. she did not have that choice. I think she does deserve to have a choice. And that really sucks to say because it's a very— very nuanced and just awful situation. There are a lot of stories of women who have been raped that got an abortion and come back and say it actually. Don't, don't, don't do that, Morgan. Made my healing process a lot harder because yeah. I got an abortion because I chose violence to balance out violence and how like that is actually not a wise decision. Well, so there are statistics. I mean, that. We're talking about this. We're two guys. Yeah. You're a woman. <laughs> right. But like, even if, even if, there are some people who regret having abortions that 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 doesn't make it okay to take that option away from other women of course talk about your experience 
talk about regretting it. Like, I, I, you know, those experiences are valid. But when you're talking about using the government to take that choice away from other people because that makes you uncomfortable or because you didn't like that experience, that is not okay. You know, should, should you, I be I'm swinging sure, the camera on? Yeah, I'm sure, Morgan, you probably, it would almost be more constructive maybe to have you and my wife talk about it because you two are people that can have babies, you know? And, yeah. it, you know, we're kind of just yapping it up like, yeah, this is, but I say all that, I don't believe my votes, direct, Democrat or Republican, has a direct effect in, honestly, the amount of abortions that are had or not had. I think that it's kind of lame that a lot of people feel handcuffed to vote for a guy that's like on trial for a number of things, including because oh, at least it'll save a couple, you know, babies potentially when that might not be the reality, you know. And that's just again based on you know the numbers. Well, let Bro, me ask you this. Okay. Let's say Trump gets in office, Supreme Court, you name it, abortion is illegal now. Okay. Do we think that now the number of abortions like just stops people stop having abortions i would say i mean you look at places conservative run states where it is uh the abortion laws have gotten a lot more strict and the amount of abortions is significantly decreased now here's here's so i i i wonder if they because people at that point are traveling out of state to have abortions or they're having them uh in not safe ways that are not getting counted. So I, I don't think that you would necessarily know that the number of abortions are going down. Here's the, the catch 22. Sure. The amount of reported abortions, right? Yeah, okay. Now I've seen things on like TikTok, women can make abortion cocktails. They can do it themselves. Now it's very, I mean, again, you call, call abortion what you want to call it, but a woman doing that to her own body without a medical professional, that's now very unsafe for her. Um, Again, I'm not saying, you know, right or wrong, but uh, people are still going to have abortion. It's kind of like the gun rule. Like, Republicans love guns. Hey, if we take away guns, the criminals are still going to get them, right? He's saying it in a hillbilly voice. I tell you what, <laughs> that's how I've always heard it. I'm, I'm from the sticks, man. But <laughs> if we take away, if we, you know, outlaw abortion, they're not going to go away. Now, all of a sudden, just safer abortions are going to go away, and people will still, I mean, this is horrible to say, people are still going to get a coat hanger. People still make a, an abortion cocktail. What are they going to do? I think um, a lot of people, especially the younger generations, will set their kind of moral compasses based off of what is the law of the land, what is being espoused from the top down. That impacts and greatly affects a lot of people's views on, well, what is right or wrong when it comes to abortion? So when you get a... a That's, uh, that just hasn't been played out historically. Um, when alcohol was banned, that did not work. That did not make people think, oh yeah, I mean, it's 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 immoral or unethical to, to drink. Uh, we shouldn't do that. No, they just did it unsafely and, and had a black market for it. Um, same thing with drugs. It's, it's when something is, is um, either like a, a, a commodity like that or a necessity like abortion is, you're just not going to steer the steer morality with legislation in that way. A president, and I'm I'm not saying Donald Trump is the the poster child of pro life, even though I do think he's a pro life president. At least he he says that, and he's put things in place. When you put someone in office who is standing for pro life versus someone who's pro choice, pro death, it is going to impact the way that the, the common man, many common men, many Americans see this issue. Yeah. That, that's another reason why I would say, man, like, I understand. For, it, it's a big deal to have someone who's... I just don't think that you're going to change... You, you're not really going to change minds on the abortion issue. Um, you're not going to make pro-choice people pro-life. And vice versa. Um, it does happen, but it happens, it, it tends to happen naturally over a long period of time. Like I used to be, I used to be pro, pro, pro life, um, very anti abortion, even though 
I never felt comfortable de- defending that position or being really vocal about it. As it was with a lot of my Christian beliefs, like I, I, I believe them, but also like that there was just like a, um, just like a dissonance in my mind of like, okay, yeah, I believe these things. I'm supposed to believe these things, but also they don't really make sense to me. And I don't, I don't really know if I actually believe these things. And so, um, yeah, over, over time, like as I got away from my indoctrination and, and from the Christian apologists that I would go back to time and time again, when I did have doubts that would just kind of reaffirm my beliefs, um, I became more comfortable associating with being pro-choice. Um, but at the end of the day, like you, you're just not like, you're never going to get me to go back to not being pro-choice. And I, you know, barring some sort of uh, deconstruction or loss of faith from like Paul and Morgan here, you're never going to get them to be pro-choice. So this argument for me just doesn't hold any water. You're not going to change people's morality by changing the law. Is pro-life an office for someone who's pro-choice? But you keep you keep doing something kind of interesting in your conversation there in that you're equating instantly pro-choice with pro-abortion or pro-death. Okay. When I still do believe women are very intelligent and women, quite frankly, probably have a much better emotional uh, kind of feel than men do. And so I don't think that giving women the ability to choose necessarily is taking a pro-abortion stance, you know, or pro-death stance. It's just saying I, in, in these instances, talking about again, like women are raped, there's incest situations. I mean, dude, there's a, it's a nuanced topic. What do you I, say, I just think the people on the other side who are very against pro-choice are not necessarily saying like women shouldn't get a choice to do anything in life, but they are saying it should never be a choice to end an innocent baby's life. Like, what a dumb fucking argument. That's not, <laughs> that's not what anybody's saying. That should, you should not have that choice. Like, no one should have the choice I, to end a baby's life. No matter yeah. what the circumstances. And that is, like, a hard thing to say. But, like, cases are very, very low. It's about, it's about, like, it's about acknowledging that, that, that people who are pro-choice don't believe that they are ending a, a human life that they are not ending someone's uh, human experience. And so it, it, in the end, I mean, like, it, it's, in, it's impossible for people like this to do, but to say, like, okay, we can agree to disagree here. I, I think it's murder. You, you don't. The law and science disagrees with me. So I'm going to defer to that, and I'm going to, you know, Make sure that you have the choice to do this, but I still think that it's it's murder, like that. That would be a kind of pro-choice Christian position, which I, I believe is probably what Josh has, and I do appreciate his stance on this and pushing back against Paul and Morgan. When it comes to abortion, like that is the least, like one of the lowest causes of why a woman gets abortion is almost always circumstances slash life, uh, like where they are in life. They're just not ready to have a baby. Like, that's the number one reason women are getting abortions and so I think like for people who are pro-choice or pro-life they're not saying women can't have choice but this just specifically is not so a choice to be made like you don't ever choose life or death over an innocent being well and then this I think and with that like I think that that is true like a lot of it is circumstantial uh situations where like people just can't it's not the right time for them to have a baby. And um, to me, I think if, if Christians really cared about that, they would be more concerned with uh, making society a better place and a more livable place where people can be have a higher standard of living. And so that when they do get pregnant, it's not the end of the fucking world. It's not devastating because 
they are already living paycheck to paycheck. They already do not have a secure place to live. They already are food insecure. Um, and, and then, and so like you're as a conservative pro-life person, you're not doing anything about that. And then you're saying, using the force of the state to say, okay, but you have to have that baby. You don't have a choice. And I, I just don't think that that's something that they one either think about or, or if they do think about, they don't really care about. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. This then gets even more into the weeds of, okay, so now let's say we have a woman who below the poverty line, okay? She's, yeah. she's pregnant. She lives in a state where she can't, you know, make that decision. She has the baby. Now that baby is in, you know, an orphanage or what have you. Then this takes it. I know I'm kind of going down a rabbit trail, but yeah. I think that one thing that kind of sucks is that we see this really rah rah pro life on the Republican side of things, mm -hmm. but there's not that same call for, you know, change or reformation in like the orphan side of things. Because let's be yeah. honest, a lot of these women, if they do have to stick with it, they're not going to keep the baby. Yeah, it's going to be an orphan. Yeah, like the, and 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 they're they're not thinking about the huge burden that forcing women to have babies is on the welfare system, on the medical system, um, and, and they're not willing to fund those safety nets. Yeah. And now we're talking about quality of life. We're talking mm -hmm. about a kid that doesn't know where their next meal is coming. And again, I know that that's not the answer. You know, that's yeah. not the ultimate way to say like see pro-life is wrong well, and I but think that's just a whole other part many, of the nuanced issue many yeah. pro-lifers are agreeing with that that let's do what we can let's put our money let's look for ways to make the adoption process to make the foster care systems healthier in Lexington, Kentucky alone the, the wait list to adopt a child is two years long because really? there's not enough people like giving up their babies for adoption and yet they do not want uh, LGBTQ people to be able to adopt who statistically adopt and foster more special needs kids than um, like heterosexual couples do. And I would say that that's probably in most states is like you hear, I've been waiting for over a year to adopt a baby. And so it's like people are choosing to abort their babies when they don't even realize like they're not getting the information of their is. And to be fair, the like, the foster and adoption system is fucked up in America. It is a lot of places are corrupt. A lot of kids fall through the cracks of the system. Um, th there's a lot of reform that needs to be done in that area. There is help out there in the world. Like there are believers and non-believers that have created um, facilities and yeah, uh, just resources that I think yeah. Like, if you go into Planned Parenthood, you're not going to hear about those resources, which is a pretty common thing that women say. Like, I didn't know that that was an option. I didn't know that I could do this or that. Back to the original thing, I don't think that your faith hinges on who you vote for. I think that this is probably the most nuanced topic of really what divides. Like, oh, this is why. If anything, I think that we could agree on. It's kind of a call for little government, in a sense, because the situations in which, you know, whether, like we talked about, um, you know, mom's life is in danger is it convenience the situations are so specific is it really appropriate to have a nuance or not nuance but a, a blanket no just across the board yeah like all, all of josh's arguments that here make uh, that he's making is very um consistent i think very logical and very nuanced but at the end of the day like it's it's for people like paul and morgan it is such a hard line issue they think it's no different than um unaliving a one two-year-old baby it's no different in their mind and so at the end of the day none of these arguments are going to be convincing for them at all um because you know kind of the same side of that we've heard stories my wife is very passionate because she loves you know foster kids and stuff we've heard multiple stories about you know, mothers that are being forced to carry babies to term that are like endangering their lives. Um, like they love the baby. They want to, and it's just like, and so I think that that's just all that to say. That's why I lean to the choosing side of things because I love America. I love freedom. Yeah. 
this freedom is one of the most difficult ones to talk about because it's at the expense of two healthy parties, you know, and only one of them can speak. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of where I land. Abortion aside, after voting for Biden, it's been four years almost. Do you, do you feel like good about your vote? It was, <laughs> it's, it's less fun. Like Trump, I'll say this about the guy. He's an <laughs> idiot. He's so funny though. Like, you know, the, the, the speeches he would give and the things he would tweet. He is comical. But all that to be said, uh, you know, I work in finance, so I'm around kind of that side of things. I do think that uh, I made the right decision. Um, there are a couple of things that Trump had kind of in place, tax bill wise or what have you, that are still, you know, more or less his doing. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really have an opinion pro or con on that part, so to speak. But yeah, um, yeah I do think I made the right choice. Yeah, I think I think I expected zero from Biden, honestly. Um, it was a vote against Trump, but he has far surpassed my expectations. Um, his has been the most progressive administration that we have ever had, and he's gotten things done that would have been unheard of in the Obama era and even in the Clinton era, and um, especially around... Uh, labor. He has been an extremely pro-labor president and supportive of the unions. And um, yeah, I mean, not not far enough at all when it comes to the progress I would like to see. But again, I he far surpassed my expectations. So um, yeah, and again. Oh, my only expectation was just not Trump, so. Oh, I like that. That's, get in there, get in there. Oh, come on back down. <laughs> golf claps, golf claps. Good shot, dude. That looked good. Warren, come to this side of it. I'm going to try to beat Josh's. I like Can't with these fucking tight jorts. Look at your feet. I don't know how to play golf, but that looked ugly as hell. I didn't feel like I swung that hard, man. <laughs> Where'd it go? It's gone. Shout out to Josh for being willing to talk through this stuff. Like this is sure. real heavy stuff. A lot, uh, a lot of people are thinking through this. You had commented on my reel, and one thing you said was, um, "I voted Democrat in the past election because Biden somehow, as a person, aligned with our values better than Trump." Mm -hmm. Sad but true. What are some ways that Biden? align more closely with your values um i think dude seeing how trump treats women is a big one okay so you just say talking, biden treats women better than trump i, I would argue so maybe, maybe so i mean maybe i mean maybe again so. i don't know either of the guys personally but i would say you see some of the things that trump is standing trial for um some of the things that you know sydney and i've it kind of talked about she mentioned like her trauma so it definitely is something that now it is a bit i'm a bit more passionate about i guess you could say okay um i think also the one thing i don't like is people that have strong opinions and then ask for others but don't listen to what other people's opinions are <clears throat> yeah i think it's i think people have a hard time uh arguing or disagreeing these days um their their opinions are so wrapped up with their identities and i feel like a lot of times if you share a different opinion or you critique their opinion, it, it, it almost feels like um, they, they feel like they're being attacked personally. And um, I, I don't know, pe people are just so wrapped up in, in their opinions being a part of their identity and they don't know how to... I guess, see, see other people's point of views. So, in my opinion, if we're being real, I think Trump's kind of a fraud. Okay. Uh, you, you know, you get a guy up there that's almost claiming Christianity, so you, pander to us like we're stupid. But you, think, someone, you think Trump is a fraud, but Biden's saying he's a, a Catholic, but su I, super pro-choice. You I think, think Trump he's panders, not a, I think Trump panders to us. Tries. Catholics are very pro-choice. I don't know what he's talking about. 
to pander to Christians. Uh, then you look at that interview where the guy's like, well, what's your favorite verse or book of the Bible? And he's like, I like both. Testaments, old comes. and new, they're both great, you know. <laughs> and, and it's just like he, he panders like, I love Jesus. And they're like, well, what's your favorite verse? I can't say I have one. They're all great verses, really. That's what I say, they're all great. <laughs> and you're like, dude. Trump is the, the ultimate populist. He will say whatever he needs to say to get people to like him. Um, but... I don't think that he has if he if he does have underlying positions, I think that they are probably uh they lean more left than what he shows. Because before he ran for president, he was a lifelong Democrat and he was pro choice. So I don't know. Like you're not authentic at all. Uh so I think he's a fraud and I think that he's So you think because I, I hear you kind of going after Trump and saying I've I don't like this about Trump. I feel like Trump is this. Mm -hmm. But as far as Biden goes, though, like what good fruit is coming out of a Biden presidency I mean, he do, for a he, Christian? He do be sniffing hair, for sure. Okay. Um, okay. I will say this uh, about Biden. And, and again, I don't know these guys personally. I know what is reported. I saw a video the other day of Joe talking about losing his first wife okay. uh, and, and kind of how that affected him and like the love that he has for his sons. And so if nothing else... I can say, well, hey, at least from what I've seen, Biden hasn't cheated on his wife. He's loyal to his family. You know, again, I can't do a deep dive on his, uh, you know, personal life. He's definitely that. loyal to his family. Loyal to Hunter. <laughs> not wanting to... Oh, is that to do with the drug problem? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not voting for Hunter Biden. I'm voting for So you, you will, like, you will, you do plan on voting for Joe Biden again. I mean, economy-wise, the border. You live in Texas, bro. You live in Texas. Oh, don't, get, don't get me started on the border, man. I, I've got some opinions on that too. You don't think Trump is better for a secure, or are you saying you, you like, you're okay? I don't, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. I don't, I don't want to board, but you, you're okay with the way the border is being handled? I'll never. I mean, Biden is, is harder on the border than I would even like him to be. Like, I don't, like, there is a surge in people trying to get here right now, but I like the whole narrative that Biden has the borders wide open and that he wants people to come in. Like, that is just not, that is just not the case. Like, that's not, uh, what he wants um he wanted that that border bill to go through which would be incredibly hawkish on the border um and um if i'm not mistaken uh yeah i believe that he is he has deported more people than or he had deported more people in 2 years than than trump did in his entire presidency so I like I just don't the talking point just doesn't hold any water for me like I, I just don't see where Biden is like being soft on the border at all forget that this was right after the 2016 election I go down to uh, Houston to hang out with a buddy of mine from college down south getting closer to the border close. so he's uh, both of his parents were illegal okay. he is legal because he was born in the United States he's telling me like Josh it's it's terrifying I can't uh, you know my mom can't go get groceries she's afraid she'll get deported and all this time they're talking about how he's like, yeah, since Trump's been in office, it's been a bit more revamped. People are telling me to go back to my country. And he's like, and I'm legal, I, you know? Okay. And so watching two illegal immigrants take, you know, this gringo in and how hospitable they were, first of all, changed my perspective. Cause I think you get the straw man painting of like, the illegals are bad and they're all gonna kill us and sell us. And it's this loving family who- Yeah, like the the, the majority of, of immigrants to this country legal or not are just families trying to find a better life and they work hard they keep to themselves and i am 100 percent for damn near open borders like i think we we need to know who is in our country we need to know who's coming in we need to have you documented but that process should be way, way easier. And if you look at it, even from a lot of, there's a lot of libertarians who I disagree with on a lot, but they have done a lot of research on, uh, there's one libertarian economist who has done research on um, open borders and, and the economy and like um, having more immigration just like skyrockets our uh, GDP. Like, 
it, it's just it's just better when the, like people um just just from like a, a a pragmatic point of view like people can produce more um in America than they can in someplace like South America um they can contribute more to society and I think um diversity is one of America's strong suits the fact that we have so many different cultures so many, so many different ethnicities backgrounds that are all together in one place that can work together um, that is just not as uh, prevalent in any other country I think makes us uniquely innovative um, and uniquely strong as a country and so the narrative that that conservatives paint of uh, undocumented immigrants being just like it really it's 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 kind of in tandem with uh, anti-Semitic tropes of of like the great great replacement theory of you know they're, they're trying to bring all these people in to to replace us and and to like Trump said to like uh, soil the blood of our country like just fucking psychotic sought refuge from like the cartel so i'm very much so even though many many people that want a secure border aren't saying like oh we're scared of all the illegals and stuff it's just more like we want to secure the right way yeah, it's it, your it, secure country where the immigrants will come in legally well, and I, also like the 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 focus on that trump did on the wall was just fucking stupid when the majority of of undocumented people in this country um, were here simply because they just overstayed their visa. They came here legally on a visa and they overstayed it. That's the majority of undocumented people in our country. And if you think that um, you build a wall, like even if it would like 100% stop people from coming in, they're going to come in through planes, they're going to come in through boats, like they're going to make their way in. Um, it would have made way more sense to just update the infrastructure, um, update the technology on the border, have more border patrol agents. Um, like I, like I do believe in, in having a border, um, and having it secure, but I think that like the asylum and immigration process should be way easier and, and streamlined, um, for people to be able to pretty freely come in. I, do you, I mean, do you right think that's way. too much to ask though? I don't think so, but I think that's the reformation is being sought a bit more on the democratic side. The right way, to your point, Morgan, can take up to like years, decades. And you can't tell me that like what Paul is talking about here is is like what the conservatives really care about when you have fucking Greg Abbott putting razor wire in, in, in rivers for uh, immigrants to get like caught up in and drown. When you talk about them wanting to line up on the border and just shoot anyone that comes across, like, uh, yeah, I mean. And if a family's trying to seek refuge from a cartel that's trying to kill them, they don't have years. So again, this is like nuance. Like, is there a correct answer? You know, should we just open the border up or should we just completely, you know, neither? I think there uh, definitely is nuance, but you would say you like the way that Biden is handling the border, which is more, obviously more empathetic and let's, you know, let them in than these governors saying, give them $10,000. So this right here is how people change their minds. People don't change their minds um, by arguing online or by um, having like debates and stuff. They have it through relationships and conversations and getting to know people with different points of view. So um, it seems like Paul and Morgan's goal here is to um, spend 24 hours with and, and interview people who disagree with them. And hopefully that changes Paul and Morgan's mind and perception over time. That would be that would be great. The ones that came in illegally, you because of the empathy aspect, you're more okay with that than Trump, who might cause a little more div divisiveness and uh, the illegal immigrants are feeling kind of nervous of deportation and they're getting blah blah. But he's at least doing more to secure our border. You'd fall more in line with Biden's approach. I think so long as there's a, a, a vetting process still. But again, this is... Um, there's a guy walking up, sorry. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll continue. Where did it go? 
<laughs> and like, uh, yeah, again, like Biden has continued to, the construction of the border wall. He has, um, I think he has deployed uh, the National Guard at some areas on the border. Um, he wants to hire more border patrol agents like he like the 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 narrative that he is like less tough on the border than than trump is is delusional get in there get in there uh, okay that was a good shot but did you see my shot that was pretty stinking good <laughs> grand scheme of things with the nuance involved looking at the different sides you agree more with biden's approach to the border than trump's i don't even know if it's by but i would lean more towards the democratic approach um and this is after again i live in texas you know i, I think it's kind of comical when someone in minnesota has an opinion on it uh, or someone in kentucky <laughs> i mean kentucky's at least a little closer but i, I think it's ironic like a lot of my friends are Hispanic, a lot of friends in college, hearing like their stories, meeting people that are, like actually illegal immigrants and watching how they treat me, the things that they say. Um, dude, we like went to an orphanage. Uh, one of my mission trips like back in college was going to an orphanage of refugees, kids that majority of the time the cartel sent over with drugs and said, take these drugs or we're going to kill your parents. Um, and just even talking with them, like with a translator, and like hearing their stories, I'm like, dude, I, I, I have a difficult time really cracking down and, and vilifying, you know, the illegal immigrants that want to come here just to for safety, for like a better life, you know, uh, it's tough. And I think the democratic side kind of embodies that a bit better. What about all of the violence that's been going on? At school shootings with white people? <laughs> no. um, like a woman was just recently in Georgia. She was yeah. on a run and she was raped and murdered by an illegal immigrant. I agree. There has to be a better solution for these people who are fleeing a terrible place, are, you know, innocent children who don't, like, yeah. who need a safe place. Absolutely. Like, we've got to figure that out. But also, like, we've got to figure out how to keep the violent criminals who are crossing freely, being handed $10,000, and then going off and committing murders. There has to be a solution to that, too. And yeah. so, like, a lot of people say, close the borders and bring these other, you know, people in who are coming in safely or, or legally, like, we'll help them. Like, yeah. we want to uh, offer refuge for the refugees. We want to, of course, yeah, whatever. You can't do that with a closed border. Like, I did. The border is not open. Um, the answer to this is to streamline immigration process so that people don't feel the need to come in undocumented. Um, and so we know if if someone is has a violent history, um, we can know that sooner rather than later. Um, yeah. I think you see my, my point with my my statement in that and like yeah like the with the violence thing like american citizens obviously commit crimes at a much higher rate than undocumented people it's very interesting to me kind of the discussion around an illegal immigrant kill someone like we said we should have shut down the borders mm -hmm. a school shooting happens where a white kid shoots the school which is just as horrible mm -hmm. And then the conversation, well, hey, it's a sin problem. It's not a gun. It's not a violence problem. So I think to kind of go there, I think there is a violence problem just in general in the United States. Uh, and that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day. But I don't know if sitting here and like shutting down the borders, hey, now people aren't getting killed. Now it's great. Yeah. Um, when I think that the vast majority of immigrants coming from South Florida are not killing people. They're just trying to make an honest living, which is great for the economy. All right, well, yeah. a more empathetic approach. Let's golf. Let's golf. All right, this might be my hole. Finally, a hole to beat Josh. I just need one straight shot. I'm going to have to do a wide open. You do not want to leave the door open for P.O. 
Oh, you snuck it. Four! 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 Four. <laughs> Two. So much for you beating Josh. You trying to kill that family? <laughs> hey, Silver Lion, that was a good shot. You almost <laughs> killed a family, but that was a great shot. <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness, boy. Golfing is done. We played uh, six holes. I was hoping that I could beat Josh on one hole. I, yeah, it was very much in the realm of possibility. It was close, it was close. <laughs> but I couldn't. One time I had a nice shot, but it hit that, that big silver pole. It hit that kid. And we <laughs> hope that kid gets better. We do. <laughs> hey, that was a good time though. Good it time was. on the course. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying this episode of 24 Hours With. We have seen so much division online between Christians, and so we decided to do something about it. So here we are having real raw conversations all for the sake of unity. But we can only keep it going with your help. If you guys are loving these episodes and you believe in the mission of this project, I think it's more so for the sake of content, but it is good content. And you want to support it. I would never watch Paul and Morgan otherwise, like a full video of them. Become a patron at any tier, but if you're looking to get exclusive behind the scenes content, helping come up with questions for our next guest and get early access watch parties, we would encourage you guys to become a patron of the 24 hours with tier. Go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show. The link is below. Yeah. What was it? Chandler Moore posted like a wedding carousel from their wedding and yeah. his wife's like throwing it back on him. <laughs> uh, they're just dancing and he, his yeah. caption was about them twerking and having a great time. I loved it. I thought it was like, yeah, man, celebrate your wife and like your marriage. So I'm assuming that the response video you made to us was just saying we're being legalistic. Pretty much, yeah. What a sweet baby. Tagged his wife, H. Grace Moore knows how to twerk. Hashtag hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw this picture, mm -hmm. I have to say, I was flabbergasted. You were off the heezy. <laughs> I was not okay. Look, I am a worship leader. I have very high standards when it comes to who's leading worship up on the stage with you, how they live their lives off the stage, and how they represent themselves as a Christ follower. I am like... Chandler and your wife, you guys within, you know, the confounds of your bedroom, confounds, go, go have fun. crazy, <laughs> go crazy and, and enjoy each other. Songs of Solomon level. But, but once you post it for the public to see, you're inviting other people in. Chandler, <laughs> there's our newlywed. Hey man, congrats on getting married. Can't thank you enough for letting me come to the wedding. It was gorgeous, man. Didn't want to pull you aside today, though. I uh, wanted to talk to you about the dancing that you did with your wife at the reception. You know, I just kind of felt led to come tell you that maybe you should have interacted with the Holy Spirit a little bit more. I mean, her her gluteus maximus was just on your, your space, man. And that's kind of inappropriate. Uh, we definitely didn't need to see that. Okay, now, I didn't pray, personally, before coming and telling you this. It was just based off, you know, conviction for you. <laughs> I wanted to tell you that. You know, I hate that your marriage got started off on the wrong foot, but uh, just don't let I felt like you guys were like kind of harping on him and being like, can you believe this guy? This guy would put. Yeah, some people like it's just the irony that some people would legitimately be say the same things about Morgan wearing like a tank top and having tattoos and like posting online. Like, yeah, um, almost kind of like shamefully, if you will. Um, yeah, I loved it. I thought the post was awesome. I understand that like it can come across as legalistic of being like, you shouldn't post that or do that or whatever. Like, I get that, but I also am like, is there not a place to call someone out who has publicly posted or done something that's like... If you, if you care about them, like genuinely, you would like reach out and have a conversation with them, but that's not what you wanted. You wanted drama. You wanted content whoa like bro we're in the same like atmosphere of like being christians with platforms obviously to a much higher place he is but like let's like talk about this like let's 
you know, question, is this mm-hmm. being, is this being set apart from the world? And so I guess like, what is your definition or what does it look like for a believer in general, but also a believer with the platform of any kind to be set apart? Like, what does that look like? Not very set, I, set apart. I just have kind of a, there. the maybe biblical justification for it is, you know, have you read Songs of Solomon? <laughs> I feel like that's biblical time Instagram, you know? Yeah. Uh, like there's one, I swear, and, and I think that scholars kind of debate it, but there is, I think it's Songs of Solomon 5. Like homegirl's talking about the guy's penis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's oh, like, the it, ivory like, tusk, yeah. and it's like, she's talking about how well hung this guy is. And that's kind of, if you're that guy, that's kind of sick. Like, yeah, this is being Josh broadcast. Vincent. But you know, I say all that, you know, it, it's this beautiful picture of like this <laughs> couple that's like under God and they're like celebrating, you know, what the Lord has brought together and like the things that come with that. And I feel like yeah. that's, modern day, you know, you don't need to be sitting there posting booty. Going off of the Chandler Moore Mm -hmm. topic, like the one difference that we are like, have grown up with, especially in Texas. So like Texas is like, when we talk about Southern Baptists, like Southern and Mm -hmm. more of those, like when we talk about the things like in sex, we've had friends who got married and then like really struggled to have sex because they felt so unclean. Texas specifically like, churches talk a lot there's a lot of shame around sex Mm -hmm. there's a lot of like there's not really celebration of sex and marriage at all and so for us seeing a figure do something like that is actually healing Mm -hmm. because it's like oh this is like this is what marriage is supposed to look like this is like what a healthy like sexual relationship can be in a marriage rather than you just find at least we've found a lot of stories around here where there's shame in the marriage bed, mm-hmm. there's disconnect in the marriage bed, and also like there's just like this discomfort to talk about it with any other Christian or like yeah. find out, you know, like how do we even have a good sex life? Yeah. And so to me, seeing that was like, I wanted to like jump up and clap because I was like, yeah. finally, we have people that are showing like, okay, like a healthy sexual yeah. like relationship and marriage is like, cool. I'll take that a step further even if you guys are cool going this direction. That's why <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> you probably see me, cool. I push back so far kind of on the, the modesty discussion because I feel like that's just, we've heard it so much. It, you know, you got to a Southern Baptist preacher in the pulpit who like if. Yeah, this, this, this happens to varying degrees within Christianity. Uh, The, the kind that I grew up in was a lot further than I think what Paul and Morgan are on. Um, I, I like had a, a courtship when I was 18 and every, I was not allowed to be alone with this girl at all. We were both adults. Um, all of our communication was monitored. We, we communicated with through email and every email was read by her parents. And like one time they had to like admonish me because I used the word sex too many times. And we were just talking about like, I, I guess sex in a biblical sense, like Christian sense, uh, you know, our, our ideologies around it, but that was unacceptable. And so that, that just is so fucking damaging for, for people, um, for women, especially there's such a large majority of women that come out of those kind of environments, um, with a condition that, that makes it like super painful to have sex. Like they, it's, it's, they cannot relax. Their body does not their body just like rejects it because they, they feel so, it feels so wrong to them. And it's, it's such a, it's such a controlling thing. It's, it's, um, it's really, it's really disgusting. I mean, that just happened. That one that was like telling women that they're responsible for their own assault. God, dude, that was nuts. I bet. And that was, yeah. (laughs) So just hearing, you know, the, these pastors hop in the pulpit and, you know, you kind of look at it and it's like, I feel bad for your wife. Like, I wonder if you, you've ever made your wife like have an orgasm, honestly. 
And I say that because it's like, I wonder, these pastors talk about sex in a very transactional manner of like, like domineering it, manner. yeah, it exists, you know, for me, for the man and then modesty for the women. The women just need to be, you know, covered up in this and that and you need to never, and it, it just gets really old really quick and you see kind of like the pastor's heart behind it. It's like, you're not really talking like biblical facts. Like you're just talking like your opinion of how a woman should dress. Well, the biblical you know. version of modesty actually has to do more with like... Wealth, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you really break down the, the like Greek and Hebrew version, it's it's less about what... There's like an American version of like what we have deemed as... Yeah, there's there's nothing really in the Bible about women uh, dressing a certain way so as to not cause men to lust or to stumble. Um, it's, it's about like wearing like a lot of gaudy jewelry or like, um, displaying wealth, stuff like that. A lot of the, uh, beliefs and discussion around modesty today in Christianity are purely traditional, purely made up, purely man-made. And the more and more you, like as, as myself, someone who is no longer a Christian who deconstructed and, and the, 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 further away I got from it, the more that I saw that it was, that all of it was just man-made and, and specifically intended, even if it wasn't intended originally, it was taken and twisted and used to control women and children mostly and, and women's sexuality. Modest just a lot. not modest. That's kind of explaining why you probably that one video of me yeah. uh, poking fun because I feel like now <laughs> it's not just pastors. It's like, I feel like any guy with a microphone now, like you weren't the first guy that I heard have a podcast and talk about modesty. Uh, there are varying yeah. levels. So there might be a bikini that is more modest than another bikini. Absolutely. As I was looking for a wife, I was like, I want a woman who is stylish and modest, who can look good in a swimsuit, but still not be showing everything. I think Michael and I both would appreciate a woman that is showing some is discretion the right, right word? Discretion? Women, it, you are called to like think about your brothers and think about and, and try to, to help them to not stumble, to stay pure. And it falls on the guy too, to be like in the word, be asking for God's help to stay pure, to not fall into to lust. So it falls both ways. So let's let's love each other and help each other. In are you helping women with this, this low cut shirt here? Not wait, I was looking for a wife. I was like, I want a woman who is stylish and modest who can look good in a swimsuit, but still not be showing everything. I think Michael and I both would appreciate a woman that is showing some, is discretion the right, right word? Discretion? Women? It, you are called to like think about your brothers and think about and, and try to, to help them to not stumble, to stay pure. Me and a buddy were eating like dinner with a couple of friends and there was a guy that took like 30 minutes to explain why he didn't date a girl because he found like a bikini pic on her Insta. Like he's scrolling and he finally finds it, he's like, like kind of shaming her for it and we're like you don't have to date her man just right, it's been on. 30 minutes like we don't care that much <laughs> it's interesting hearing your all's upbringing and the southern baptist um stuff because i feel like growing up yeah like you just don't need to project your preferences on other people if there's a certain kind of person that you have in mind that you want to be with just look for those people and filter out the people that don't fit that. You don't need to talk about what you would appreciate as a man online. It, it, and, and and you should not be, as a man or a woman, you shouldn't be molding your life around what someone says that they would appreciate. Just fucking be yourself and find someone that appreciates you for yourself. I grew up in a Christian home, but I felt like modesty was was like taught but like I remember my mom taking me shopping for a bikini the first time and I was like what mom like no <laughs> um, and so interesting uh, yeah I feel like the people like the adults who are really into modesty are the ones who did not really grow up in it when you when you grow up in it I feel like as you get older you start to reject that and, and realize that that's stupid um, a lot of it is like the new converts or um, people who have kind of like, I guess, returned to Christ later on in life 
but they didn't they didn't like really grow up in it like that was not ever a thing in my house and then i kind of became a woman myself and like came up with thoughts and opinions of my own and like with modesty like you said you know it's more about wealth and how you act and how you portray yourself and how you love people around you biblically speaking but i think also there is an aspect of like kind of what i said a bit ago of like how do we set us apart from the world and like for me if women who are you know not walking with christ are out there you know wearing bikinis showing off their butt cheeks like whatever mm-hmm. i personally am like i'm not gonna do that because i want to be set apart from and that's totally fine if you want to take that on for yourself that's what that's what religion is all about. It is a personal thing that you take on for yourself. It's when you start projecting that onto other people and you start prescribing things for other people and shaming them for not taking those things on that you've taken for yourself, not taking those things on themselves, that, that's when the problem comes in. What the world is doing. And it's not a, and I want to be seen as better and higher, whatever, than them. But it is... And, and it's just like, why, why, like... Like, wh- where's the line for that? It, it's totally subjective because, like, this outfit right here would be utterly inappropriate for a lot of the Christians that I grew up with. Showing, like, this amount of leg, sh- like, having a sleeveless shirt here. Even some even, even some people, like, wearing pants was unacceptable. I grew up with people who exclusively wore dresses. And so it's just like, where, where do you draw the line? Like, and, 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 like, you have this certain line for yourself. That's nebulous because there's no like prescription in the Bible about what you can and can't wear. It's nebulous. So, you know, you're going to decide, yeah, this is this is the line of modesty that I decided. And I'm going to shame people who don't live up to that. But there's other Christians who have much further lines down the road of modesty. Um, But I'm not going to live up to that. And and I, I, you know, I'm not going to be shamed by that is a i want to honor the lord in all areas of my life and that goes along with my body and my body is my husband's and so i'm not gonna like show it off to the world because i don't need the world to see my body you know i think this way but that doesn't necessarily mean other women are gonna think that way um and i trust that a woman who is walking with god is going to you know seek him when it comes to like what what do i wear like what 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 do i yeah, and you should you should probably just accept that that's that's probably going to look different than your personal opinions on the matter. You know, how do I carry myself in fashion? Like mm-hmm. it's you know whatever, um, call it legalistic or not. But I think we should be asking, seeking the Lord on literally every aspect of our life, like the music we listen to, the the shows we watch, like seeking the Lord. Not that it's like I have to pray for a week to ask God if I can watch Suits, like, <laughs> but you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to like this podcast with N.T. Wright. He's talking about. Um, the story of the adulterous woman in the Bible. And the first thing he says, he says it's very ironic that the, the title is quite literally just the story of the adulterous woman when it takes two to tango. So it should have been the, the story of the adulterous man and woman. It's not the Bible that did this, but we see kind of Christianity almost adhere to the societal norm, even way before Jesus. I'm going to run to the bathroom right back. All right. And stuff like we need to kind of shame women a bit, look down on women a bit, a bit more control on women. Like, look at this adulterous woman we need to stone. Forget the guy that participated in the sex. He's, he's fine. He's just, boys will be boys. When I hear just a multitude of guys just talking, talking, and again, Paul, you were not the first one. Guys that just keep on harping like, ladies, this is how you should dress. If fellas don't want a guy that, or want a girl that dresses like this or that. When to your point, Morgan, exactly right. Like, it should be kind of on every woman and man. There's a lot of immodest dudes I see kind yeah. of in the gym, you know, shirtless. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it should be on every woman and man to kind of like personally just like interact with the Lord and be like, how can I best have like a modest heart posture with you? And this is kind of my personal opinion. I don't know if you find this super biblical. When it comes to maybe gender specific issues, if we're talking about how women should dress, I always lean to the side of, a woman should have that conversation with a woman and like man with a man. I saw a post again on Twitter. This statement was men 
you're responsible for your eyes and your thoughts. Women dress modestly. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? Hmm. <laughs> mostly. Like, mo- mostly. <laughs> because scripture is very, very clear. Jesus like, gouge your eye out, dog. Like, if you've got a problem. And then when we talk about dressing modestly, see, I still hear you say that. And my mind goes to it of like, <laughs> I know. And I know you're not saying this, but my mind's like, Paul's asking, or that tweet on X is asking <laughs> women to literally like turtlenecks in July, pants only. There's truth in that, that statement. Um, but again, like, was it a man that said that? It, Probably. Yeah. Was, it, at some point, it's just like we're always talking about women, and it's like, can men address men for a second? Yeah, when you're going to address them. And just the, like, just it, don't, like, I would like to see one time where men hold other men accountable and don't bring women into the conversation. When are we going to address the, the Christian fitness influencer that's like shirtless in the gym? Because oh, women are, women, yeah. like, whether we, we believe it or not. Yeah, the discussions I got around modesty and like purity and stuff were utterly horrendous and, and misogynistic and, and totally place blame on women the majority of the time. Are not like women are constantly being like under a microscope of like what they need to do and whether they ask for it or not are being told what, what they need to wear what they need to do and it's like <laughs> i would just really like find so much peace in seeing men like make one statement like holding another like other men accountable to their role in christ and their role in the church and their role with women without bringing women into the conversation yeah, this is good this is interesting you mentioned kind of specifically when men say talk about modesty and weigh in on modesty on women's modesty there's oftentimes an underlying current of shame uh we made that video two men weighing in on you know, how do we feel about women wearing bikinis mm-hmm. what are our thoughts on that if we're looking for a spouse is that something that we, that we think about i'd be curious morgan kind of after engaging now a little bit into this modesty discussion did you feel like there was as a female, an undercurrent of shame there? Hmm. Or, Morgan, like you, again as a female, do you agree with it? Mm-hmm. Let me hear it one more time. So I hear that, I'm still kind of like, I, I agree with what was said there. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out where we're, are we just seeing it differently? Or where's the kind of... I I think it's weird that he is like trying to defend himself here rather than like engaging with the conversation of modesty and like the discourse around it. I can definitely see why a woman would listen to that specific clip or that video in general and feel shame, feel shamed. Um, And I would say my guess is the shame that they feel is not just from this video, but it's like bringing up all the stuff that they've heard in yeah. their past, growing up over a lot of time. You know, yes, I too have heard over and over, it's my fault if a guy stumbles because I was wearing something that made him stumble. Like, it's my fault. I have to be careful. But I didn't grow up with, I think, as much as like what you were hearing. like. So for me, like, I I hear that and I'm like, makes sense to me. Like, I get it. Like, yeah, I want to honor my brothers in, in Christ. Like, I don't want to cause anyone to stumble. If they do stumble and I know that I've done my part, like, in honoring the Lord and what I'm wearing, like, that's, I don't take that for one second on myself. But I can see many women who do because of what they were told growing up. They're like, it's my fault, though. It's my fault. And so, like, yeah, I don't I don't have that upbringing or, or those thoughts in my mind. So, for me, no, I don't feel shame when I listen to that. Um, there have been things in the past that I've heard from men and women that have made me feel shameful um, mm-hmm. for many different things. But that was not one of them, no. And plus, too, you know his heart. Right, and yes, that's, that's the, that too. the yeah, part that we can't discount, you know, and it's not even, let's say, Paul, you put it, like, so eloquently, like, let's say no one has ever said it like you did in that podcast, <laughs> like, like, modern day theologian type, like, people are hearing this, wow, he has such a way with words, you know, even then, it's the fact that we, as men, have, like, dug ourselves such a hole that even if you put it so eloquently that it's perfectly said, it's still the fact that it's coming from, here's another modesty take, 
from another guy. Talking about that clip, it just kind of seems like, and I, I, I think meeting you, like, I yeah. think you guys are like the coolest people ever. Oh, like, the, truly. Um, the chat, <laughs> get that chat, clip that. <laughs> so it's like, and, and knowing your, where you're coming from in that clip and everything, like, it's really cool. Um, when I hear just that clip pulled apart, I hear another video <laughs> podcast <laughs> talking about women's bodies, whether it's modesty or what they want them to look like or okay, what the what shape right. they're supposed to be in and what they're supposed to wear. Sitting down with y'all, I don't think that you meant it like that at all. But um, like, I just hear that clip and I instantly am like, Ugh. why are men still talking about women's bodies? What just if, what if I, like, sorry. No, go please. <laughs> What if I told you that like a hundred women messaged Paul and Michael and were like, "Hey, can you make a video on like your all's thoughts on modesty? Like, would that make you be no like, kidding. oh, well, then you no should way, <laughs> no, honestly, oh, yeah. like that does that does yeah, yeah because That's when we started our YouTube channel, our following was like ninety eight percent women, and we would get so many messages and comments saying, "Can Paul and Michael address from women address modesty? Can they address?" what you there they would look for in it, a woman it was, so interesting it was kind of that format that. it was kind of that format of <laughs> not necessarily like i need to know exactly well, i want a man's opinion on modesty but more of like as a single woman how does a christian guy that's looking for a, a christian wife how does he think how does he feel about modesty how does he feel about going out on dates how does he feel about the thing is it's like it's, it's going to be different for every man like you should not you should not base your life around what any one given Christian man or any man in general thinks or has preferences around. That's just not, that's just not it. And so, I mean, I guess, yeah, if you just want this one random dude's fucking opinion on it, sure. But like the, the like opinion to have here is like, um, you know, I, I guess like, you know, respect for you respect yourself understand you know how <clears throat> a lot of men view you etc make decisions around that make the decision that works best for you and so to, to to like make certain prescriptions and stuff is just like feels icky and is just like uncalled for oh, women making the first move so i think that just was all kind of circulating yeah, yeah. So far, though, I have no notes for, for Josh. I've been really impressed by him. I really appreciate his views on things, his stances on things. Um, you know, obviously, at the end of the day, we're coming from different ends of beliefs. Um, but, you know, as, as an atheist, I'm not an anti-theist. I'm not anti-religion. I think it has good benefits for society and... Um, I, I think that uh, Josh is like very focused in on humans, um, maybe not over and above his beliefs, but like very much a part of his beliefs that 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 he is not just like um, viewing everything through this like purely spiritual lens or or through like um, this one narrative that 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 he has been taught, but he is really considering the human side of things. And I think that that is what is missing in a lot of religious circles and a lot of Christian circles. And it's just something I, I really appreciate. Um, he just seems like a really genuine and, and great dude. Like I was do laundry and just like leave my laundry in the dryer for like days sometimes and just pull out That's of the dryer. Scary. He's like no, immediately, immediately out. out. I'm the same. Why, well, why would you like, do that? Because it's like, it's like a fun thing. little way to delay folding. No, and because still then when I go to do though. laundry, then it's sitting there and I can't. And if I want to like a warm, <laughs> a warm <laughs> sweater. Okay, just in there. I will. Exactly. Hey, I invite the comments. I invite you guys. <laughs> you you do a load of laundry. It's sitting in the dryer for days. You get it out to wear it incredibly wrinkly. It makes no sense. Church Chad makes a lot of Christian. I mean, the, the whole focus is Christian comedy, pushing yeah. back on 
that church chad guy who's just cringe. Are you filming? All right, let's just get this over with. What's up, church home? Associate Pastor Mark here, coming to you live from Los Cabos. Wanted to thank you all so much for giving generously to let my wife and I come on this mission trip to visit the orphanage. Now, bit of an update per Mexican regulations. We can only visit the orphanage one day out of the week, so we're gonna see them next Monday. But on the remaining days of this two-week trip, we're gonna be on the resorts, praying for the workers, and just really diving into Mexican culture, usually via jet skis or golf. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for giving for this trip. That's sounding a lot more like a vacation that it is a mission trip just like his his comedy is funny and it really pokes at like um at like real issues and real things that go on in in the church like this is what a lot of mission trips are like you guys stay blessed a question that i gotta ask though is there a line when it comes to like i think of john christ yeah, yeah. I think of, you know, other maybe bigger Christian comedians or Christian meme pages or Christian content on Instagram that memes makes... Memes for Jesus. Memes for Jesus. <laughs> memes for Jesus. Shout out. Yeah. Where'd the shirt come from? Wow. In your mind, when you're creating um, a new, what would you call it, skit, yeah. meme, is something in your thought process like, I don't want to go too far in making fun of something that's kind of within yeah. the within christianity like it's, that, it's still my belief system it's still yeah, your yeah. belief system i really firmly believe that like people really handle accountability best from themselves so like christians wouldn't be super receptive to like an atheist being like this is what your religion you're an atheist you don't know what you're talking about sure so I'm, uh, one I, I think that it's important for someone within the group to call the group what it is right so i think that's kind of my first part behind it i think that there have been a lot of people that have been hurt by the church and so my hope is like hey i hope this gives you some sort of healing like if this situation happened to you now the line because we want it to be funny that's something that's very i would say just per video um what sunday is that again <laughs> but if it's comedy it's like how close can we get to the line to where mm -hmm. it's still because do, pe do people write in and sometimes and say like you you went too far you went, in yeah. this you went too far there, and like i told you all earlier like there's videos that you've been like you can't post that oh yeah you know? he comes <laughs> to me before every pretty much i mean we pretty much bounce off like each That's idea yeah. and before he posts the video i get a, t a look at it to be like and you're like, you can't post <laughs> you that. You represent both of us. <laughs> <laughs> because even for me personally, there are uh, videos that you've made, me and Sir Jesus has made, yeah. John Christ, and I'll watch it and I'll be like, that was killer, hilarious. Yeah. And you even like pack some wisdom in there calling people out that need to be called out. But then there have been times where I'm like, ooh, that's getting kind of close to that. Spicy. Yeah. Spicy, even maybe like uh, irreverent. To your point about the line, it's like, it's not good comedy if you don't at least flirt with the line. Now you gotta have a line and that's why i have my like best accountability partner who also gets humor right here i think to like the the idea that th there's, there's so many christians that like really withdraw from the idea of christianity being mocked um and, and to me like that it, it's just ridiculous that the most powerful and influential institutional religion on the planet would be like entitled to not be mocked like that's ridiculous um you know I, I i i don't think that you should mock individual people i don't think you should like belittle people for what they believe um but at the same time like the like beliefs are not um entitled to not be mocked they're just not and christians know that because they mock uh muslims they mock people of other beliefs. They mock people of disbelief. They mock atheists. They understand that. They just get triggered when uh, Christianity gets mocked. And there's like an aspect of it where they feel like you're mocking Jesus. And, and again, like it just, you know, we, we don't have the same beliefs around Jesus. Like I don't believe in like holding him in reverence. And so that might be triggering for you, but it's like, it's, you know, Jesus will be fine. He's not going to get butt hurt over a few jokes, you know? You, you, you'll you be fine, too. Just, just fucking let it roll off your back. Uh, because if not, I'd probably just be off the walls talking about it. There, <laughs> there are some, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> absolutely not. But the opposite of that is just being not funny. <laughs> I would love to see those drafts. 
just stop. Yeah. That's fair too. And when he comes into, you know, a conversation, for example, like the modesty response yeah. video, like we had talked a lot about, I think you probably did an original one that I was like, no, yeah. like, <laughs> because scared, there's uh, stuff that's scared listening. to watch that one. We have people in our lives who will call us out if we're like going yeah. too far or if, you know, something isn't hitting the mark. But also the accountability goes the other way. It's like, we need to start telling each other, like if your art sucks, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whoa. Your friend's like, hey, what do you think of this? A lot of, I, I mean, to be fair, like a lot of art in general sucks. Like the, the majority of art just kind of sucks. Um, but especially Christian art just sucks so bad that a lot of times they're like a decade behind on cultural relativism, relativism, um, on creativity. Um, and then, then they just like hedge themselves in, in so many ways and like topics that are off limits, et cetera. And it just makes the art suck. This, you know, awesome song I just made is Christian. You just need, part of you needs to be like my, my brother in Christ. This isn't good. You know? <laughs> I feel like he's talking about Big Nick there. So I think the accountability. <laughs> that's, that's hard, that's hard to, to do. That that, hard that's to much do. more difficult to do. I appreciate your thoughts there. Yeah. Um, that's very. It's a good question. That's very interesting. So Josh, does the name Sadie Robertson Huff mean anything to you? Are, are you talking about her video that she posted? <laughs> Sadie Robertson. She posts a reel of herself and either friends, a couple friends or a couple sisters, dancing to none other. <laughs> it ain't Texas. It ain't Texas. Beyonce's. <laughs> what is it? Texas Hold'em? Sorry, it's a good song. I love that song. Hold'em. <laughs> cool. And yeah. I see you post from your church, Chad. She was getting some heat in the comment section, and you ultimately defended her. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, ooh, this is interesting. I looked at some of her comments, and she actually came out recently, and I saw you share that as well, where she kind of made a statement on the whole ordeal. Oh, she did? <laughs> she did. She do you remember yeah, what she... Like, I don't remember what she said, but she, she had to do that. <laughs> she deleted the post, though. You obviously feel like she should not have gotten criticism for posting the video, dancing to Beyonce. Yeah. Could you see, though, is, is there any world where someone would be right to push back on her dancing to Beyonce? Don't ask me this question. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you've gotten it. Like, I've been a dancer my whole life, and yeah, yeah. you oh. can't dance to... Why don't you so dance to some casting crowd? <laughs> casting crowd. So this has been the conversation of my lifetime. I, I. So first of all, it was funny enough. It was Caleb that posted that story. I didn't. I didn't know about it. I just check, and we've got like people responding. I'm like, Caleb, what'd you do? But I agree with him. I, I agree wholeheartedly that it, it's ridiculous that she's getting kickback on, you know, a, a segment of that song, where. Like the segment doesn't even cuss. It's a clean um, version. It's a clean version. I'm like asking people that are responding. I'm like, would you have had the same problem if it was the instrumental? And they're like, yeah, it's still problematic. And I'm like, what, what do we want then? Um, and, and so to answer your question, is there a world where the criticism is valid? I mean, maybe she's just throwing booty. You know what I'm saying? And it's like <laughs> super wrong. inappropriate. And we know Sadie's not throwing. And Sadie's booty. not throwing. No, like, she's like, not like, doing that. She's not throwing <laughs> no. booty. You know, I, I just did not feel like the criticism was valid at all. I thought that people were just really reaching. They love to tear someone down. Like Sadie Robertson, who's literally like probably the most well-intentioned person. The fact that she used a clip that was clean, that was respectful, that was like, uh, the dance moves were even respectful. At the end of the day, like you can't, like as a, as a Christian, if you're like any kind of Christian public figure, you're never going to make it through your life or through your career without having people uh, criticize something that you do in some way. No matter how modest you are, no matter how godly you are, it's going to happen. I don't even, like, you know, I've like... I've never seen a more respectful dancer. I know! <laughs> it was so respectful. The, the dance, dance moves were respectful. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, I, I totally get I get your all side. I guess my wondering... In the in the recesses of my mind is <laughs> what what, what, what are, should we, shouldn't we be different than the world are, are we called to be to be apart separated from the world I'm gonna bet twenty dollars right now that's what he's about to say is there any secular music artist that she could have posted herself dancing to that you would have been like yeah maybe for this Christian influencer a significant Christian figure that goes and she 
Teacher. She teaches at conferences. Okay. I'm gonna go all the way to the extreme just okay. because I, I wanna see if there's a world when you, specifically Josh, would say like, no. Sadie Robertson and her sisters or friends post a video, I don't think you do, you might, post a video of <laughs> Cardi B. Them dancing in a very non-sensual way to WAP. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Megan the Stallion, <laughs> oh Cardi B, WAP. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, who gives a fuck? Like, why, why, why do you need to have an opinion on it? Just scroll past it. Be like, all right, Sadie, you just picked the worst song. You would support people in her comment section saying, Sadie, this is not. This wise. is not a great song choice. You would I, I, I would me. have to relent to that. Yeah. I used to do a lot of dance videos, um, and so like even in those, I would always make sure that like as a Christian. The selection that I chose was for sure clean, but out of all the issues that like we as Christians should be like fired up about and ready to like take action over, I'm like, like Sadie, Sadie Robertson, Robertson yeah. doing a very <laughs> short clip with mm -hmm. nothing wrong. Some of the comments were just so intense. Yeah, like, intense. it's yeah. one thing to be like, you know, maybe the, like if you're coming, you're like, maybe use a different song next time. But some people were in there like. I feel like if it was like a country song, like a Morgan Wallen song, something like that, there would have been no issue. I I feel like it in part had something to do with Beyonce. Writing novels People and we're like, like I my yeah. whole entire personality is being mad at, at Sadie Robertson of my faith has been shook by Sadie Robertson. <laughs> and you're like, Hey, don't come in hot to Sadie's comment section if you know, you, you have an issue with that type of art, but then you go and watch, you know, Dune Two. Or like it's like oh you know mm. i i this art whatever yeah it's like where's the line are, are do you are you just not watching any secular content at all you're not listening to any secular music at all like the one thing that just made no fucking sense to me as growing up as a christian um was like the hard line stance on music like you could not listen to secular music i was not allowed to listen to secular music at all i would i like even listen to like some oldies classical music sometimes and my parents shut that shit down but we could watch secular movies we could watch movies with violence in it we could watch movies with cussing in it that was cool it's just like what like what what are we doing here listening to this it's bad but i'll watch this you know rated r movie you know and it's like so you're just subscribing to a different type of art that's just as secular, you know? And to that, I would say, which is Dune 2, PG-13, or R. I have no idea. I just threw that out because it's... Yeah, good. yeah. But, <laughs> well, there could be very much a thing of Christian conviction, how we could have different convictions, but I think mm -hmm. you would probably say... And that's, yeah, that's totally fine. You can have your personal conviction, but it's just that a personal conviction. You don't need to be judging everyone else for not following your specific personal conviction. Like... Yeah, there are gray areas. Dancing to Beyonce, if that goes against your conviction, fine, but yeah. you probably don't need to be getting out here and blasting her in the comment section because yeah. it's not a black and white thing. Mm -hmm. And going and seeing Dune, not a black and white thing. I think just like with Beyonce and other artists out there who have just been blatantly blasphemous towards God or, you know, like are known to be incredibly sexual, mm -hmm. have made songs, that whatever, like, I think Christians are kind of like, why are we even, like, in any way, shape, or form supporting yeah. those artists, like, mm -hmm. in their art? If that's the issue people have, I'm, like, down with that. I think when we start getting, like, really, really nitpicky, I feel like Sadie has <laughs> probably the most pure <laughs> yeah. platform. I feel like people yeah. should, even in their criticism, give her credit. I think there's this just idea among many Christians of what does it look like to one, just be set apart from the world, but two, just avoid worldliness. Do not be of this world, but be set apart by the renewing of your mind. What does it look like in your life to be yeah. set apart from the world? That's interesting. Or what does it look like? What would you say is an example of, of like, these are things that are worldly? We talked about kind of like convictions, uh, but then people treating it like it's a commandment, right? Like, oh, my personal convictions. Uh, the verse on, what's the verse of like, not everything is beneficial, but everything is permissible mm -hmm. type deal. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that addresses a lot of like gray areas. And so for some people, I mean, again, we all have like different upbringings, right? So like if, if you see, let's say, you know, and again, I'm, I'm speculating on your upbringing. You sure, see sure. someone like drinking, they're over 21, whatever, like, oh, that's worldly. Whereas for me, the line, if you will, of like where I, I'm set apart is like if I'm hanging out with 
you know, some friends or whatever, people who maybe aren't Christians, well, we're not getting drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, we know the limit of alcohol. And I think the first thing of really worldliness is kind of like knowing where your convictions are with the Lord and where your discernment is. Um, now that's a bit more personal. And now, understanding can, that that's different for everyone. Understanding that that's different. Now that's a bit more personal. So like people can't really see that when I make a video. What would you say to some of our audience? Because I just know this is going to be the case. Yeah. Some of our audience who watches maybe some stuff you've posted in the past and been like, oh, or watches this. They just said that they listen to secular music mm -hmm. regularly. A Christian shouldn't be having a large digest of secular music or... Josh cusses sometimes. That is mm -hmm. seems worldly to me. Josh is okay with this. That seems worldly to me. What would your response? I, I think it's it's like what Bryce said. It's like it's a very powerful thing to believe that you're the one that has the exact line of convictions and things figured you're out. 100% and you're correct. so correct of like this is where the line is drawn and like you know essentially you're compromising your your walk with Christ if you're anything but this. It's very powerful to believe that. It doesn't always make it true. Uh, and it's most certainly probably not true that, you know, you have it figured out and everyone. Yeah, to think like the, the, Christianity has just been so vastly different throughout different time periods, throughout different cultures. It was vastly different in the Old Testament for the Hebrew people. It was vastly different for the early Christians. It was vastly different for the people in the 1300s. And it's vastly different today than it has been in any other period. And to think that you in 2024 have everything figured out and you know what kind of life a person should be living in order to be a Christian or to be in right standing with God is just, is just a little ridiculous to me. Like just get, get a little bit of humility. Come on. What else is, you know, super wrong. I get, cause I growing up, you know, super Southern Baptist, but also kind of my parents being strong believers and things of that nature and small town, you know, people are watching. I get kind of the, feeling of like, how could they do that? And then how could they, you know, be a Christian? You know, how, how could they, you know, partake in this? I think just from my end, it's just kind of like to the people watching that are like, this guy's so worldly and, and questioning my salvation. It's like people have different perspectives and, and different life situations from you that mold who they are and, and even more so kind of re that reflects in their walk with Christ. You know, the problem we run into is oftentimes, and this is kind of where the legalism comes in, it's like, it's almost never presented They're like, hey guys, like this is just a personal conviction of mine. Mm -hmm. Take it. It's, it's always, always, this is Bible. If you are a Christian and you do this, yeah. but also we were talking about it too, like what gets views? What oh, gets views? Oh, now if we're getting into that. Christian, you know, uh, right <laughs> um, and, and so. The, the more explosive the title, the more explosive yeah. the thumbnail, the more black and white. You're going to hell yeah. if you do that. <laughs> and, and it's just like, that baby's just vibing. But yeah, I mean, that's true. Like it's, it's, it's a lot different too. When you are a Christian content creator, I, I just, I just feel like I, like, it's so hard for me to take them seriously. Like the, 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 the genuineness in their views, like how much are they, um, how much of this is just for show? How much are they like punching up what they actually believe? Um, how much are they just like trying to create drama? Outrageous how much people want to shout that for real though. Right. Right. It does feel good to tell someone that they're wrong <laughs> and that you are doing better in your own life. Oh, yeah. It feels great. At the end of the day, like what you're bringing up, like I do think that there are points where people have they're to liars. say like, is this furthering my relationship with Christ or is it hurting it? Yeah. And if you can't, if it is hurting your relationship at all or it's not like, then you got to get rid of it. Yeah. That's bottom line. Love it, dude. Well, how can people support Church Chad slash you personally? Where can they find you? How can they support you? Can you can find Instagram. It's Church Chad. TikTok. <laughs> um, you can probably just put in Josh Benson. Josh Benson, the rapper. At Sydney Michelle Benson. Yeah. Sydney okay. Michelle Benson. Hello. Uh, she makes great little like lifestyle videos and stuff. <laughs> uh, but then I drag her into my comedic bits. Uh, You've made me more funny over time. We will link nice. all of these links below. How do you guys feel now that uh, you know we've we've hit into some pretty <laughs> deep, heavy topics? I love. We live for this stuff. Like it's yeah. just it's been like I'm so glad y'all came in town and like. 
I, I would like totally hang out with y'all again. <laughs> like, yeah. I think you guys are awesome, and it's like it's really cool to meet other creators, and like we don't always have to agree on everything to yeah. like see how incredible people you guys are, and like your heart for the Lord. Like I know you guys love the Lord. I know like you're a great mom, you're you're a great yeah. wife, husband, father, and so it's like I, I respect you guys. Like from that point, and those are like the biggest points alone. And it's like we'll probably continue to disagree on things, you know. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time so that we can have kind of conversations around this. And, you know, maybe people in my audience will like be like, yeah, they make good points. And maybe y'all's audience will be like, maybe that guy's not as bad as we thought. <laughs> yes. You know, we can kind of just be a little bit more unified. You we know? can That's unite. Yeah. You guys have been seriously amazing for inviting us into your home with a one month old. <laughs> if someone, literally, if someone asked me to do this after one month postpartum, I'd be like, are they freaking insane? Like, no. Language messy. <laughs> Our time with Josh and Sydney was a lot of fun. Still agreeing to disagree on certain things, we walked away with new information and a sense of unity. We hope you feel the same. We think the beef was squashed and a new friendship has begun. Josh did agree he would never make another meme criticizing us. Just kidding. Bring it on, Josh. We can't do this without your support. If you believe in this mission and want to support the project, go to patreon.com slash paulandmorganshow or send a one-time Venmo donation. Links below. Unite, grow, entertain. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Psalms 133.1. I go and I tell my haircut lady the same thing every time. <laughs> Me too. I just show her a picture of one of the guys off the bachelorette and I'm like, this is something <laughs> like this. <laughs> All right, again... I, no notes for Josh. I mean, I, that was like, um, like I, ideally, what I would look for in 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 somebody who I could say, like, yes, this is a a a, a good Christian. Um, and for for me, as as like an atheist, as a secular humanist who is like very human centric in all my thinking, that that uh, like my morality is all based off of you know, what I believe to be best for individuals, what I believe to be best for humans, for society, for people's well-being, based around facts, statistics, data, etc. cetera. Um, Josh's Christian beliefs, I think, are, are married very strongly with a humanist ideology that he is, is really taking into consideration um, humans as they are and, and not just viewing everything through this kind of black and white spiritual lens. And that is something I, I greatly, greatly appreciate. I think he is super funny. His wife seems lovely. Um, so yeah, really, really um, impressed by him. Um, Paul and Morgan, I, I can't say the same. They, they spew a lot of bigotry, homophobia, transphobia, uh, et cetera. That is one of the bigger things for me. Uh, and the, the anti-choice stuff, of course. But, um, I do commend them on this new kind of, uh, chapter in their content, something kind of fresh that is not really being done in the Christian influencer world. And my hope is that these kind of conversations help change their points of view to become more human centric, but also their audience and the audience of, of other people who are watching. Um, I, I think, you know, the more kind of people like Josh who can, um, provide a a less fundamental kind of view. Um, the the more beneficial things like this would be for for Christianity in general. So yeah, that's that's gonna be it for this stream. Give Josh a follow on. 
TikTok especially, he 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 makes funny stuff on TikTok, especially if you like grew up Christian or you are Christian. Um, he just makes really really relevant and really funny content around um, things that you're going to recognize from your childhood or from your teenage years growing up in in the church, um, and he is a genuinely funny dude. Um, so go support him, go watch Paul and Morgan if you like on their channel. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.